Hey gang, welcome back to another video. If you've ever had a prop that needed to look like textured concrete, well then you're in luck. Because in this video, I'm going to share a theme park inspired method that comes straight from the happiest place on earth. So let's get to it. First things first, I need a prop to demonstrate this technique. Thankfully, one of my Patreon supporters, Savant42, provided me with a 3D scan of this little guy from the recently departed Disneyland Haunted Mansion Fastpass area. So I threw it into my Bamboo Lab X1C and let it do its thing. Once the model was finished printing, I noticed that I needed to clean up a few small blemishes in the surface. And rather than sand it down, I reached for my soldering iron and this small ironing tip. This will allow me to smooth these areas out without the added dust, although it is important to keep the iron moving so that you don't melt through your print. With that out of the way, I can move on to texturing the statue. And for that, I'll be using a new favorite medium, acrylic modeling paste. This can be thinned with water to help with application, but for this project, I'm using it as is since I want to build up a textured appearance that will help to sell the effect. I'll be applying it with a pouncing motion, making sure not to leave any brush strokes in the finish. In the event that I do, I can always go back and work the paste a bit more, or if it's dried, add more paste to cover it up. I'll repeat this process over the entire statue, making sure to rinse out my brush with water as needed since the paste can clog it up as it dries. And when the statue is completely textured, I'll set it aside to cure. Next up is the base layer of paint. This can be brushed on or sprayed, but more importantly, you want it to be a medium gray color. So with a spray can at the ready, I got to painting, making sure to get into all the recesses and overhangs. This paint has a satin finish, but ideally you'd want something more matte, but this will get the job done and it saved me a trip to the hardware store. When the base color had dried, I switched over to a lighter gray and started to dust the statue, just trying to get the high spots. The can of spray paint I was using was nearly empty and as luck would have it, it started to sputter paint, which is the next step in this process. So I used it to my advantage and added a light gray speckling. While I waited for the light gray to dry, I mixed up two small cups of acrylic paint, one dark gray and one white. These will be used for additional speckles and are a 50-50 mix of paint to water. To get the speckled look, I'll be using an old toothbrush, dipping it into the paint and then drawing my thumb across the bristles to sputter paint onto the surface of the prop. I started with white paint since it was easier to see, but also because this technique has a tendency to get away from you, and having the ability to apply a second, darker color over the white will help to tone it down. Once the white speckles were applied, I switched over to the dark gray and repeated the process. This speckled paint job is a very Disneyland approach to concrete objects. If you're ever in the park, take a look and you'll see what I mean. It's a little cartoonish, but it definitely passes the 10 foot test. In the event that there were areas where the speckling was too busy, I used a detail brush to soften those areas before they could dry. Now I'm not too picky about this since the final step will help to marry everything together. But before I can get to that final step, I'm going to mix some black into my dark gray paint 
and use it in all of the recesses of the statue. This will help to give it more contrast and accentuate the shapes a bit more. This also is meant to replicate the natural weathering that happens as dust pools in the low spots of the statue. With that out of the way, we can wrap up this paint job, but I'm going to need some space and some white spray paint for this last step. I'll be dusting the statue with white spray paint to give it a subtle sun bleached look. This should be done from a distance of a few feet. Socks and sandals are optional. And when your statue, or whatever prop you're turning into stone is dry, you can call this one done. Now this little guy is going to be a great addition to my Haunted Mansion collection, and this paint technique really gives it that Disneyland feel. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something.